Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. I am Richie Ware, and this is Stephen Taylor. We're continuing our series on STEAM topics that everyone has curiosity about in the boiler room. Now, yep. last time we talked about wet steam and dry steam, um, kind of the differences between that, so you can go check that out. Today we're actually going to be talking a little bit about steam trap operation failure. Okay, so let's just talk first about steam trap, Stephen. What does a steam trap do? When you put steam out in the system and it uses the energy in the process, whatever it is, it condenses, turns back to water, you got to get it back out of there. And you got to get to separate the steam from the water so you don't have water hammering so it does its job. That's what a steam trap does. It mm -hmm. does exactly what it says. Traps the steam from the condensate from the water. When the water enters, enters the, this trap, it pushes it out, steam pushes it back, or it dumps it into a container, a uh, reservoir, and then it's pumped back either way. Right. Most of the time it's pushed back by the steam pressure. So it's just separate, that's all it's doing. It's just separating, you know, keeping the steam, the steam, and the, as soon as it turns the water, it gets it back to the condensate, DA system, condensate system, so it can be re recycled and turned back into steam again. Is there a situation like when a steam trap fails, that when it fails that it's actually costing money? Yeah, the biggest place that it costs money is when the steam trap fails open. So mm -hmm. then it's running steam straight through, steam's going back, uh, you're not getting the, 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 the energy out of the steam, so the process is not working properly, you're overheating the DA tank, the condensate tank, whatever you're doing. If you got steam blowing back in there, you see a big plume of steam coming out of the DA tank where it's, the relief valves are popping just all kinds of problems, you just wasted a lot of energy. Right, and typically in a pretty good sized plant, you don't have one or two traps. No, you may have one or two thousand traps. Right, yeah, right. You, you, and, and 500 in a plant is not uncommon at all. So it, yeah, and there's two, they, they fail either closed or they fail open, mm -hmm. one or the other. Mm -hmm. And it's real easy to see if it fails open, your, your, your line's hot all the time, you hear it whistling all the time. So right. It's, it's got junk in the, in the orifice in it. The, the, if it's a float trap, then it's got, you know, the float is bad, something's in there that's bad, it would let open all the time. If the condensate line's cold, then it's blocked. Most of the time that's from the strainer being stopped up, so mm -hmm. nothing can get, can get to it. Okay. So it's completely blocked. And then you back condensate up in the line, you get all kinds of process problems. And what about water hammer? Where does that come from? You'll, that, you'll, you'll get that with, if it's stopped, if mm -hmm. it's blocked, then you got water backing up in the steam line and the steam is hitting that wa water and it's, it sounds like somebody in there with a big sledgehammer all the time. So I guess the, the big thing then uh, is how do I know that it's actually working properly? The, the best way is with a, with a gun, okay. you, you know, a temperature gun. You put it on the trap on the downstream side and then it, and you sit there and watch it, it'll cycle. If the trap is working properly, it'll cycle. You can see the condensate line, temperature go up, temperature come back down, go up, back down. That's what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to cycle. If it's one temperature all the time, something's not working. Yep. Now we did an episode with Brian Grandstaff on uh, steam traps, all the different types, because it was not just one. Bucket tra trap is not the only thing that's there. But you can also check out our good friends at Armstrong um, and, and really just see what they do because they've got some, uh, some testers, of course. They've got programs, monitoring uh, systems, monitoring systems yeah. and things like that. So you can check out Armstrong as well uh, to see a little bit about traps. So we actually have a question from last week about traps. What is the best way to add a trap to an existing system? One of our buildings doesn't have a trap ahead of the main shutoff valve, so when we shut off the building, the pipe backfills with condensate and hammers when we open up the valve. It's a six inch, low pressure, 12 PSI line. Yeah, so uh, the best, the rule of thumb is when you, when you, whether to put a trap in or not, if you're questioning to put a trap in, put a trap in. If there's a question you think, well, should I or shouldn't I, put it in. You can never put too many traps in. First thing. Second thing, how to put this in, you get, you get a six inch line here, drop a six inch, we'll call it a wet leg off of it, a drip leg off of it, have a drain valve on the bottom of it, come off the side of that leg. So if your leg's this long, come off the middle of the side of that leg with your trap, then run that back. That'll take care of all your water. Perfect. He asked another question. So he's going to hit two. Is he going to get two hats, Chuck? <laughs> Hat and t shirt. Hat and t shirt. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, he says, this, the second question is, what steps can be taken to extend steam trap service life? We just replaced the majority of the traps on campus to comply with the new state regulations, and I was wondering if there's anything I can do to keep them in good condition as long as possible. 
First, first thing, garbage in, garbage out. So if, if you didn't do a steam survey, you don't know if those traps are in there properly. You don't know if they're in the right place. You don't know if you have enough, you don't have too many. You don't know what you have if you didn't do, have a steam survey done. If you just went in and replaced them, there's really not much you can do to extend the life other than to make sure if the trap does not have a built-in strainer, you put a strainer in front of it. Make sure you always put a strainer, that trap has to have a strainer, to keep junk out of it. If it's cycling garbage, and you're gonna have garbage in the steam line, you're gonna shake things up and you're gonna have rust. If that gets in that trap, it's either gonna wear the trap out or it's gonna stop the trap up to where it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Perfect, now we're gonna be having these different topics, and again, we're gonna have questions that you can put down below in the comment, okay? So please just comment down there for us, but give us a question about one of the topics that you see right here that Chuck has uh, got up on the screen. Pick one of those topics if you want to, send us in a question and you will receive a free hat. So we appreciate Jeb sending that in and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.